Hey everyone, uh, I'm Nicole Formosa, the managing editor of Bike Magazine, and uh, we're here with another edition of Ask Bike. We have Anthony Smith, our photo editor, John Weber, our online editor, and Ryan Palmer, our gear editor. And we're just uh, taking questions from you and having a discussion. So um, at any point, if you want to comment with a question um, or anything relative to the magazine or the industry, just uh, write it in there and we'll try to get to it. So um, where are we starting, John? Got a bunch of nerdy questions lined up to start. <laughs> uh, if you guys have anything less nerdy that's not about gear, then definitely send that in. <laughs> anything about riding or, or magazine or photography yeah. or writing, anything like that, send it right in, put it in the comments. Uh, first question though, for the rider who wants one bike to do it all, shred single track, bike packing, and the occasional winter ride with snow, is 27 plus or 29 the way to go? Well, <laughs> um, I have an opinion. Yeah, I, I think well, bikes are so diverse these days. You can kind of do anything on anything. You know, we were just on a on a trip, the three of us, on Catalina Island, and it was a it was a bike packing trip, and I had my Trek slash coil spring in the back, like <laughs> one seventy not, travel four. Yeah, it not, was like fire road. <laughs> not a bike packing bike. We had people on the, on the trip on like cross bikes, totally. hardtails, twenty nine yeah. plus bikes, like drop bar bikes. Yeah. yeah, it was just it was just about getting out on your bike, and, and it just, was so fun. Yeah. Like, the bike wasn't like the bike you had was obviously overkill for what totally, we did, totally. but it was such a fun trip, and everybody had a great time. And I, I think the point is, it didn't really matter. Like it was yeah. still a bike; it was still a vehicle for adventure <laughs> to get yeah. to get you yeah. out there. You Even know? if it's not like optimized for that specific task, you know. Yeah. Like I mean, look, our, like what we do, um, you know, and as a gear editor on the gear side of things, what you know, what we're doing is like when we review bikes, we're sort of pointing out what they are. Mm -hmm. best at right like this yeah. bike is exceptional at doing this it's not so great at doing this right that's our job to point those things out but you know in the end yeah you can get any bike and do, and do anything with it um obviously a cross bike's not going to be that great in the snow <laughs> <laughs> yeah. well, with studs, but, maybe. but i mean like depends on the snow <laughs> maybe <hard> right <laughs> if it's hard pack I mean, it, it's yeah it's like i mean if you're riding in the snow a lot you probably want to get a fat bike for that but mm -hmm. obviously the fat bike's not going to be di dialed for some, something else like it might not be optimum for other st styles of riding but if you're riding for six months in the snow maybe you get a fat bike and that's really yeah. like who knows i think mm -hmm. you have to look at what you're riding most yeah, of the like time a blanket the a answer is so hard to say you know like there's so many different factors that go into it like just yeah. the feeling you want to get out of being on a bike, you know, like yeah, mm -hmm. totally. Yeah, and th and if you really do want to choose between those two, well, now there are lots of bikes that offer you that option, that exact I mean, option where you get, can switch between the two. Yeah, you get get any number of bikes that are coming out right now with you know boost spacing, mm -hmm. and you can put a, you know a two three two 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 three. 29 on there for super fast riding or mm -hmm. you can go up to like you know 3.0s on some bikes um and even you know that'll work in snow and sand and mm -hmm. whatever i think yeah but like you you can actually get one bike and two wheels and have a exceptionally even more versatile bike right yeah but and that would do anything i can understand how the market would be so overwhelming you know like there's so confusing. much and it's always changing you know yeah it's and like it you can see what, what were you saying Paralysis. paralysis by analysis <laughs> yeah. like there's so much to think about now yeah, if you were going to go buy mm -hmm. a new bike there are so many options and it's true you yeah. just have to think about i guess priorities and you know what's most important yeah. to what you ride most of the time sure. but the, the the biggest thing is if you're in the market if you happen to be in the market for a new bike right now uh they're they're uh better than they ever have been mm -hmm. and yeah. they're more versatile than they probably ever have been um so you know, just make a choice and, and get on it and start riding because you're missing out if you're not, I guess. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Aaron Edwards, flannel, yeah. is it a prerequisite to being rad? I, I mean, I for, <laughs> I, I for sure would say yes. Oh. <laughs> I would say yes. I don't, think I've, good. <laughs> I don't think I've done a single Facebook Live without a flannel on. Yeah. Yeah. So, <laughs> so it's must, at least a prerequisite be. for that. Yeah, yeah. It must be. Good question. Um, <laughs> let's see. Is the Fox Dropper Post better than the Reverb? Ooh. Have any of us written the Fox Dropper Post yet? I'm writing we, it right now. You are. Yeah. The what transfer. Do you think? I love the lever. 
Yeah. <laughs> That's awesome. Um, pretty good so far. I just got off a, a week long trip and, um, like big days every day with it. And a lot of, it was in the Alps. So a lot of up and down, obviously. Mm -hmm. So lots of dropper use and, um, so far so good. I mean, yeah. good engagement and yeah, I mean, it's maybe a little early. I've spent a lot more time on the reverb, but yeah. so far I really like the Fox actually. Mm -hmm. As far and like the, the last Fox post, the was, DOS, the DOS was, I mean, it was way overdue for yeah. a update, uh, which the new transfer is that. Um, but the DOS, like, you know, comparing them, the DOS and the reverb as far as, like, reliability was concerned. Like, the DOS was clunky and it had a weird lever and there was a lot of stuff people didn't like about it. And it only, it didn't have internal routing and stuff like that, right? It was mm -hmm. pretty, uh, it was a pretty outdated product, but the reliability was there. So, you know, if you could judge... Uh, you know, if that's anything, any foreshadowing for what the transfer is going to be like holding up, you know, it might be looking good for that. The, the reverbs have had their reliability yeah. issues in the past, mm -hmm. but they're mm -hmm. operationally, they're great. Mm -hmm. Yeah. On a kind of related note, uh, we had a question, uh, if mechanical or hydraulic dropper is the way to go, which is yeah. kind of like reverb or anything else. Well, I mean... Well, actually, what is the question? Because the reverb is the only one that has a hydraulic right. actuator. Right. Everything else is cable actuated. Mm -hmm. But does are they referring to hydraulics inside right. the post to dampen it, it its return? Mm -hmm. You know, in which case those are more complicated, right? But then you, if you don't have something that's dampened, you've got something like the specialized, like the original gravity dropper that just slams up, or right. a specialized. Um, command post which also does the same it right. doesn't have an oil dampened unit to uh give a real smooth right um return anything else good <sighs> coming Tan up? tandem dh would you do it oh my god tandem oh boy. DH. what no no i don't think so <laughs> that sounds like it is that I'd, a thing i'd go down a paved road on a tandem <laughs> tandem dh man did i miss something? that's hardcore <laughs> yeah <laughs> Uh, not, I just imagine not like, if you want to like the person. I just like imagine the, the Stoker with... getting bucked over, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> over the top of the bike. Flying over your head. <laughs> Jerry of the day material. Maybe you know what? I didn't see any tandem folding e mountain bikes at Eurobike. Mm -hmm. I'm sure that there was the one, one thing there. No one... Yeah. yeah, maybe tandem trike. We must e just miss. It'd be hard to miss. Yeah. <laughs> uh, okay. What else? <laughs> flats or clipless? I race enduro with flats and XC. This is a clipless. good one for Anthony. Oh yeah. yeah, flats, of course. Flats. Anthony raced BC bike race on flats. <laughs> you know, but again, it's it's one of those things. I don't think it's gonna dictate your ability to ride yeah. one thing or the other. It's whatever you prefer. I just totally. I just have fun. I like to like, I shouldn't say it, skid around and draw <laughs> draw my foot and just like Impa. just I don't know, just have fun, you know. But um, I'm I'm in the minority with with any group rod that I'm on, everyone's clipped in, you know, yeah. and you, and you look at the race scene. I mean, you look at the outliers that don't clip in and like, you know, enduro and downhill. It's like, God, you can probably count them on one hand. The yeah. People that mm -hmm. Do that, you know? So it's, like, is that just that from your, in. you just grew up not riding, not clipping in or just spent a lot of time riding on a 20 inch BMX bike. And you know, you just kind of like get that yeah. sensation of like moving the bike around without being clipped in and, and I don't know, I, yeah. just, I just like it, you know? It's interesting, this person is saying he switches for different disciplines. Yeah, which, let's see where that question And you do I that, don't. John. You switch back and forth quite a yeah, bit. Yeah, yes. He said, I race Enduro with flats and XC with clipless. And I, I also switch back and forth. It has less to do with uh, the riding I'm doing, although sometimes I'll ride clipless, like mm -hmm. if it's trails that I know really well, just because I'm more comfortable with that. But um, yeah, I switch back. I'm mostly on flats these days. Mm -hmm. I just it's have funny, more fun on like flats. Or our staff is split yeah. pretty half and half yeah totally yeah, yeah. somebody um, asked about e-bikes again yeah someone asked about e-bikes what, <laughs> what, what do we think about <laughs> new e-bikes are they good or bad for the industry we've talked about this oh yeah before. we talked about that one at well like, yeah you know maybe from the photo side at the at the enduro at crankworks in whistler um, quite a few of the photographers were using e-bikes to help them with Perfect. the transfer mm -hmm. stages yeah. and getting Perfect use of an e -bike. getting into the right spot to get the photo. I was like, well, yeah, that's a perfect use yeah. for, a, for yeah. an e-bike. I mean, riding around with all that gear, 
and trying to kind of stay ahead and be in the right place at the right time. Like, Enduros are hard to cover. Yeah. Um, yeah. Well, it's so interesting because we... That is a cool element. The three of us were just at Eurobike. Yeah. And if that's any indication, <laughs> which it may or may not be, I mean, who knows, but there are more e-bikes there than non. No, yeah. but I mean, yeah. I swear, everything is e there. It's totally accepted there. Yeah. Mm-hmm. It's mm-hmm. there's so there's so much pro- like you if you know you you can't be a brand exhibiting there and not have an e mountain bike. It's amazing. Yeah. It's yeah. almost just Canada like another. One. You know, like the question earlier about twenty seven plus or twenty nine. It's almost just a different option. Yeah. There. You know, we're yeah. here. It's just so contentious. You know, there's. It's true. Yeah, over there, it does. It does seem. It's a lot more of that. It's like. Oh, this is just another category. People seem yeah, just fine with it. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And here, yeah. there's a lot more contention over it. Oh, and you see yeah. people ripping around on them everywhere. I mean, it's yeah. just totally different. I haven't seen them a whole lot on the trails we ride down here. It's I saw one a couple weeks ago. But it's definitely it's still not. Rare. Yeah, it, it's not out there. But and, I you know did. a lot of the brands that do offer e-bikes overseas or have like. Um, in the last couple of years haven't offered them over here yet. You know, they're kind mm-hmm. of withholding because it's a contentious issue here and they're like, well, you know, when are we going to bring it over to the U.S.? So it is something that's developing first in Europe and mm-hmm. the U.S. is definitely, I mean, off the back or yeah, yeah, yeah you want to look at it. It's, <laughs> it's hard to say good or bad. I mean, I think over there it's probably people would say it's positive, mm-hmm. you know, like yeah. it the benefits of allowing more people to ride and you know you always hear ane- anecdotes about that and you know yeah. nobody's going to say that's a bad thing um i think what we don't know here is just trail yeah. access and it affects access for yeah, sure. yeah and i think that's what you know has people concerned and yeah yeah so. we've been riding like i've been riding one a bit and i just i mean just pure pure fun factor it's it is a fun bike to ride like you can I mean, it allows you to go uphill way faster than you normally would. Um, and then, which is fun. It's never <laughs> not fun to go faster. And then uh, coming down, actually, the bike that we have, um, which is that uh, Specialized Turbo Levo, actually handles per- like it handles a lot better than I thought it would on the downhills. Like, you can, you can, I mean, it's got more mass to it, obviously, so it's a little bit more bike to maneuver, but it's balanced, which is what, yeah. what's important. So, we, were, we were talking too I mean, about like using it for scouting out new trails and areas. We oh, totally! Well. Mm-hmm. Like it's so yeah. hot here. Going on scouting. You don't missions. just want to like go out and ride around and or for like get trail lost work necessarily or... in the summer, but yeah, yeah. or for trail work, trail carrying work, shovels you know. and tools. Yeah, be good. Um, I think they're. We'll see. You'll probably just be seeing more of them. Yeah, anyway. yeah. They're, good, they're good coming. <laughs> well, when I well, went into that specialized shop and asked them if they were sell because they had a couple on the floor, and I yeah. was like, "Hey, are you selling these?" And he's like, "Way more than we thought." Yeah. You know, yeah, he was like, interesting, and it's not just one group. He's like, I sort of assumed it would be, you know, like the older mountain biker, and he's like, everybody who demos one and has the money buys it. Yeah, wow. Huh. And so it's pretty interesting. That is. Hmm. Uh, on a related note, we were asked, uh, "Are riders getting lazier?" Hmm. Does anyone actually want to climb or pedal anymore? Interesting. <laughs> oh. That's a good one. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's it's ironic because the bikes are better at climbing than they yeah. are. Yeah. Yeah. I I still want to climb. Me too. I still want to feel like I earn my my descent, my ride, and I still I mean, enjoy suffering and sweating. And yeah. yeah. For me, that's yeah. a big part of it. It's like it's like that sense of accomplishment. You know, it's like I don't know if you take that away. Yeah. That's a that's a big part of the satisfaction of riding for me. Is like yeah. You know, just. Kind of getting through stuff up and down, you know, like pushing yourself yeah. on the downs and on the ups. Yeah, yeah and like cleaning technical climbs mm-hmm. and, yeah. you know, like gauging how you're progressing based on that is, Yeah, it's a good, that's interesting. Yeah. Well, but I mean, riders say, probably like, are getting lazy. It, well, it's interesting, <laughs> yeah. I mean, like, uh, you can shuttle, as far as the people that I know, like I would say like everybody, every out of everybody that I know, uh, you could probably say that less than 5% of their riding is done shuttling or, yeah. you know, like, mm. and even on like a lot of the shuttles that, you know, we, that will go on, we're only shuttling it because if we did a loop, it would be like a 60 miler with a ton of pavement. Right. Yeah. Where it's like, it's still a massive ride with lots of climbing. You just get 
more descending than climbing or something, you know. Or maybe yeah. mountain bikers are just getting older. Maybe. Maybe we're just oh, aging. Yeah. Just don't have the yeah. same energy maybe as we, when we just don't want to go on a thirty mile pavement. <laughs> like death rock. march yeah. when you were up for you just spend your entire day. Yeah. Totally. You know, I I do think it's the Maybe the answer industry. is yes. or maybe we are getting lazy. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Or maybe it's new people who were too lazy to get into mountain biking in the first place, and now they can ride an e-bike. Oh, Ooh, you know, on the trail. Interesting. <laughs> Which hey, pointing I mean, fingers now? <laughs> <laughs> no, that I don't think. I think the average mountain biker is still plenty hardcore and yeah. still yeah, loves mystic. to suffer. <laughs> yeah, and loves to go on mm-hmm. big rides in the mountains. There's a reason why people are drawn to mountain biking. You know, it's like you like that mental escape, and you like it's. it's yeah. I just think it's popular to like showcase the downhill parts of riding more than the uphill parts of riding even though the uphill is always going to be part of it yeah you're not going to yeah. see like a climbing shred at it exactly probably well maybe maybe once e-bikes get more popular yeah. maybe you will <laughs> yeah uh so clearing but, airs uphill so a different subject um Serious question this time. Much of Europe and Canada are more lenient about allowing mountain biking in mountainous and alpine areas than here in the U.S. Mm-hmm. What is Bike Mag's stance on improving access to mountain bikes in current wilderness areas in the U.S.? Ooh. Wow. That is a serious question. That is serious. <laughs> well, I mean, I think we definitely support improving yeah. access for mountain bikes. We, yeah. Mm-hmm. We've certainly been covering it yeah. quite a lot and will <clears throat> continue to. And... Um, you know, I, it's a, it's a really tricky thing, yeah. I think, you know, yeah. mm-hmm. I mean, I think it's really going to be interesting to see what happens with this bill mm-hmm. and mm-hmm. that was introduced and, um, how that moves forward, if it moves forward and how it moves forward. And, um, but yeah, I mean, obviously I think we're all writers. We all want that access. Yeah. Um, and well, like, do in you, a respectful way, you know. Do you think that like mountain bikers should be uh, allowed to ride in places like Yosemite, you know, in national parks, or like what should we be fighting for, like unlimited access, or like what? How are we? Well, I don't. I mean, what do you guys feel about that? I mean, I personally think like recreational tool. Why can't I ride it on the trails in Yosemite? Mm-hmm. But you know, there's a ton of hikers there, so it's like. It probably wouldn't be that enjoyable. It wouldn't be enjoyable Somewhere for anybody. Like that. <laughs> I'd have to stop a lot. They'd have to get over. You know, we both have. We don't. There's there'd be a lot more sharing going on there, and so it did. And, it, yeah, and would that be? A, and it would be frustrating for everybody involved. But yeah, I don't know. I mean, does that? I don't know. I still feel like if somebody wants to do it, they should be able to. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I mean, public land, and yeah. should mm-hmm. you be able to? ride your bike on pub- on any public land. Yeah. It seems like a pretty convincing argument that like bikes should be allowed where equestrians are allowed. You yeah, know, because all the studies have shown that bikes have less of an impact on trail uh, degradation than than horses. Than horses. Than, than yeah. riders mm-hmm. too, so. Definitely. That's my take. And there are some issues mm-hmm. in Canada as well, like the national mm-hmm. parks. I don't think it's a blanket approval there. I mean, I know in we're, we've got a couple stories planned kind of looking at that actual issue. And mm-hmm. I think it's worked in Jasper National Park and yeah. kind of, you know, how that might be an example for other national parks. But it's it's not like a free-for-all necessarily up there. Yeah, there's a lot of provincial parks that, like, yeah. people, you know, will sometimes poach and get in trouble for and it's a big issue up there you know like because mm-hmm. it's and that you know a lot of the argument up there is like we've got all this other land why do you have to go and ride this stuff but yeah i mean yeah but i, I was just stay in... out of the places we're not actually allowed in because we don't want to create those fights but right. yeah i do think that we should keep fighting for more access yeah definitely yeah. yeah and after just having ridden in europe for a week and like every trail is open is open yeah, mountain bikers no or open. hikers like there's mm-hmm. no like this is closed that's like it's just open yeah yeah and um which was i mean it's really cool to see that and see people mm-hmm. share the trail and obviously some of the more the busier trekking trails like as a mountain biker you're not necessarily going to go there anyway because yeah. you don't yeah you that's know? a good argument For you sure. know like why would you want to go to the parking <laughs> yeah. lot that's super congested <laughs> totally. and and backed up i mean that's not a place yeah, yeah. Where you 
want to go necessarily. It's just maybe the quieter places that you don't have access to. You mm-hmm. know? Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah, Palmer and I actually went for a hike after your bike on this rad trail that would have been awesome for a mountain bike, but we were both like, yeah, it would be, it would just be too crowded. Like, too mm-hmm. crowded, and then yeah, as there. we got higher, yeah. it became like a real hiking also, trail. Yeah. Too, too technical. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but yeah, it's like the, for the first couple of miles, we were like, man, this would be awesome. Why isn't anybody riding this? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, let's see. Do we have any recommendations about skills courses um, that would be good for a moderate to advanced rider? Wow. I guess it kind of probably depends yeah. where they are. Yeah, there are it's a lot. Regional, isn't it? There are a lot of them. Mm-hmm. Um, I feel like, yeah, it depends on where yeah. you are, but I mean, like, there's, I'm, I'm kind of like mm-hmm. hesitant to call them out because I know I won't remember everything. Yeah. <laughs> well, like, if, if, you know, for example, like, like Trek tre- Dirt Series and. Yeah, or if they happen to be in Southern California, like um, Mammoth runs those advanced camps, or Snow mm-hmm. Summit runs the advanced camps with like Cam, or with, uh, Kyle Stray and Cam Zink come out and mm-hmm. show mm-hmm. you how to jump and ride fast downhill. Yeah. But. That's I mean, I think I, I think, getting tips from people of that caliber, I mean, that can benefit anyone. You know? Totally. Sure. And like, if the question is, is it worth it? If yeah, to be able to pick the brain of somebody that's been. Definitely. racing or riding at a level like that mm-hmm. hell yeah 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 and the, and it's just, it's something that uh, used to only exist like at Whistler but it's expanded so much there are since. so many now and you can mm-hmm. go to a lot of places and do yep. that. yeah and and I mean honestly like any any bike park like to get that amount of like if you're looking at bettering your technical or you know downhill skills or jump skills like going to a lift access bike park gives you the opportunity to get a ton of vertical feet in descending mm-hmm. in uh, in a day, and you can do like thousands of tabletops or th- I mean, like you yeah. go ride yeah. a line for a day, and you've you've hit a couple yeah. thousand jumps, mm-hmm. you know. Totally. Um, so it gives you the opportunity to progress quickly, even if you're not doing a lesson. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But I think bike yeah. parks are good training, especially if you use someone like a fast friend who you can ride with and totally. try to get some points from. Yeah, chase your friends. Their speed. Yeah. yeah. Um, all right. Uh, this is maybe a question for our resident Canadian. Oh. Uh, mm-hmm. Where is the best riding in Canada in the winter? What's your favorite place to ride? Well, Whoa. winter. In the winter. In the winter. We well, have to say coastal BC, right? Yeah. You know, so, like. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, Sunshine Coast on Vancouver Island. I mean, even the Sea to Sky Corridor in, in Vancouver, um, most of that stuff is rideable during the winter, you know? It's, mm-hmm. it's a, I think that's what makes it such a epicenter for mountain biking. It does have that year-round kind of vibe, even though it is going to be kind of wet and cold at times. But, uh, but moody. Mm-hmm. And the traction <laughs> in the wet is ridiculous, too. I yeah. Mean, it's so good. Yeah. Um, I mean, the traction in the wintertime can be better than the traction like in like when we were just up there for Crankworks and it's just mm-hmm. like the driest possible time of the year. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's actually, you, you get better, better. I mean, the, the conditions are better when they're wet than, than when they're often, uh, con- yeah. when they're really dry. Yeah. I mean, as far as a, as a place that's going to have a, a huge network, I, I have to say that's the only place yeah. in Canada that's going to really be pumping, mm-hmm. you know, the whole winter. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. All right. This is uh, a nerdy question that we've been asked a bunch of times. Uh, so we're just going to answer it one time. We're just going to answer it one time. Yeah. <laughs> That's uh, it. It has to do with rim width. Uh, what well, I'm is... the one that loves. I'm like, I love these. <laughs> That's guys. why you're the gear editor. <laughs> what is the ideal uh, internal diameter rim width and tire width combo for a trail and all mountain bikes? Take it away. Twenty six inner <laughs> with a two five tire. Interesting. I don't know. <laughs> but are there any two five know. tires? <laughs> I don't know. Well, I think people are really curious about like the thirty to thirty five range, right? Right, where there's been a lot of expansion over the past few years. Yeah. And it's in my sense, it's definitely dependent on your tire choice, right? Like you can mm-hmm. you can put a tire on there and it can just square up and like all the tread is completely flat. Yeah. And it doesn't work well. It's like really slow and doesn't have any cornering traction. Yeah. If I mean, if you want to at this very moment, if you wanted to go out and buy a set of wheels and tires today, you'd have fewer options if you wanted to go with the 30, you'd have fewer tire options if you wanted to go with the 30, 30 or 35 mil mm-hmm. uh, rim, but those 
are expanding quickly. In the next six months, three months even, you'll see more and more tires that are designed for 30 and 35 mil rims yeah. hitting the market. Um, between like two fives that have wide, I mean, the yeah. Maxxis, the, the, the Maxxis WT tires are specifically designed for that. So mm -hmm. like that would be, I mean, as far as what, what I've ridden personally, those are the best option for, uh, for that at the moment. But Bontrager has stuff come in. Uh, Conti has stuff. Yeah. Uh, mm -hmm. Specialized has stuff. Everybody's making, everybody's designing tires. Everybody's designing tires for yeah. those, that width particularly. So, mm -hmm. yeah. I mean, that's why I say like 26 or 28 or something like is a good wide rim width while still allowing you to have a much larger uh, um, array of tires to choose from. Yeah. But if you already know what you love, um, then yeah, and I mean, if, if you're just if you're willing to stick with one tire, I'm willing to just stick with Minion WTs on on same yeah 28s or 30s and be cool. Well, so but. so they're saying trail on mountain. I mean, do you think the tire should be that two five two six range, or that's I mean, that's kind of seems like where we're going. I feel like that's where the industry is going. Yeah. I mean, it uh, like, yeah, like there's not quite, there's going to be, there, you know, some two sixes have been Skinny announced plus. and some are becoming available now and there's going to be more two sixes that two sixes is a new yeah, category. Definitely. Yeah. Um, cause with a lot of the boost 148 rear ends, like you can fit a two six in a regular non plus bike. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So, um, that's pretty cool. Uh, it just goes back to the days though. It's like, it reminds me of <laughs> the Gazzabaldi and like the, we, that's what we've already done this before. It's all yeah. cyclical, right? It's yeah. all the we same were riding stuff. two twos and two threes, and then we went up to two sixes, and then we went back to two threes. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. You know? Uh, so. I'm sticking with two three. We could just stick I'm with a two Luddite. three for a while. <laughs> I mean. But it, it gets back to the first question, right? Like, I know. Right. And go at it. <laughs> it back all then, goes back to that. Back then, I was out in the woods on my bike with big fat tires. And today, I'm out in the woods with not so fat tires. Yeah. And maybe next year, I'll be out in the woods with big fat tires again. It's like, I'm going to be out in the woods. You know, it's like, there is a constant here. Yeah. The yeah. only constant in mountain biking. You just, I mean, uh, you just need to figure out which tires are going to work on the rim width that, you have, that you've chosen. That's it. Yeah, yeah. yeah. totally. All right, uh, question for Nicole. High tower, twenty seven five plus or twenty nine, and depending on the bike overall. Ooh, I love the, bike, yeah. love the bike. Love the bike. It that bike actually changed my mind about twenty niners. I mean, I had been pretty. I, you know, it'd been like a good year or two since I'd spent a lot of time on a twenty niner, and I just sort of always felt like, I don't know, I hadn't been on one with modern geometry, and that was the first one I'd I'd been on where they, you know, the geometry really felt right, and I. I, you know, now that's all I'm riding. It's just kind of a short travel 29er. So um, I rode it most of the time with the 29 setup. Um, I really only did a few rides with the plus. Um, and I, I just preferred 29. I felt like the 27 plus, there are definitely some good benefits, like the, the obvious ones, traction and descending and it really helped my weak points for sure mm -hmm. but I just felt like some of the climbs and I it just felt a little sluggish to me and in, in accelerating in some places and it just wasn't for me it didn't feel like enough of a benefit to want to switch over yeah. but I did spend a lot more time with the setup as a 29er so I'm probably a little biased toward that but mm -hmm. I mean amazing bike yeah Cool. We've gotten a lot of questions about that bike. People are definitely interested in it. Yeah. And that's going to be in the Bible. That'll right? be in the Bible, mm -hmm. so it'll be a little more comprehensive. And we got review. asked again a uh, Bible location for this year, which we announced on our last Facebook Live. Northwest Arkansas. Northwest Arkansas. Bentonville. Bentonville. Yeah. Yeah. We're going to go ride some rocky Arkansas trails. We're all looking forward to it. I, well, yeah. you've been there. Yeah, I went on a of... scouting mission there. Is... Yeah. Got um, the rest and of I was stuff. able to do like we were there for, I think it was, uh, three or four days of riding and it was just solid back to back. Our our tour guide um, 
just brought us to, he brought us to all the highlights like wanted and, to show you everything yeah <laughs> wanted to show us everything and, and um and he showed it and we i mean we only scratched the surface because we were only there for a few days um but we the stuff we saw was just so much fun pretty diverse or is it very all, diverse yeah. yeah and they're i mean they're putting in they're investing a lot in their um in their trail infrastructure because they're you know they want to become like a real mountain bike destination mm -hmm. which i mean they already yeah they already have the trails to do it um but they're expanding even more they're they have they're gonna have 40 or 50 new miles of trail between when we went in the spring and when we're you know when we're going back next month um the Imba summits there and i the think that's there a big November. part of the trail building push too is mm -hmm. that'll be a good chance to showcase the yeah. area but they basically had like all the trail building companies in north america bidding on different trail designs in all these different uh lands uh in northwest arkansas so it's like i mean it's like all the best trail builders just going to town in the woods there yeah um and we we actually got the opportunity built to ride one that was being while it was being worked on um and uh and it, like it was funny because the the top part was completely finished but it wasn't open yet so it was very new and it was a flow line so it was like you know one of, it was a machine built flow line uh that they had you know mini excavators on and everything um but the top part was just so much fun but you know maybe about three feet wide and just like all all perfectly timed flow and nice uh, and so there's a lot of that going in and there's also a lot of natural trail yeah and we were able to mix. ride some some really kind of slow techie stuff as well so yeah there's a good good, good diversity of trail there yeah nice. should we do one more yeah let's do one more um who oh my god this is, god. Interesting, <laughs> this is interesting is mountain biking too opinionated <laughs> Yes. What? I think it is. What's, no, it's not. No, yeah. <laughs> What's our opinion? What we yes. argue about. What's not too opinionated? I mean, yeah. with like, I just think it's this whole so social forums now. Like, opinions mm -hmm. are everywhere all the time. Mm -hmm. You can hide behind your computer and write whatever you want. And write the opposite the next <laughs> you day. You know, if you like, want. Yeah. be devil's advocate. I, I just feel like you, you know. You yeah. read, there's so much out there mm -hmm. now that. Is it too much? I don't, I think it's, I find humor in it. I, think I mean, it's, people well, are passionate. Humor. There's humor in it. Yeah, yeah I mean, maybe it's too much. Like when I think about um, maybe other sports that have more of a, a broad appeal to mm -hmm. like the lifestyle and the culture. Yeah. Like maybe that can turn people off a little bit if they're looking at it yeah. from the outside. Like, why are you guys? So arguing about this, yeah, right. and it's so well, it's like, like, why you guys about... argue like why does the guy who's riding the mountain bike argue with the other guy who's riding the mountain bike because one has gears and one doesn't? Like, yeah. Oh, all of a sudden I'm not hardcore if I if I have gears on my bike and it's yeah. not fully rigid. Like, sorry, I don't want to be a complete masochist and like <laughs> completely ruin my body. Yeah. But you know, if you want to do that, go for it. And like, we're just gonna butt heads. Yeah. People and then are... yeah, people on the outside are just like, why are all these mountain bike yeah. geeks just? People are over the so same thing. yeah opinionated about <laughs> gear. It's just it's amazing. Well, that's that's I mean that's why like the e-bike thing is so contentious because like mm -hmm. people, I mean that's part of it, right? People are like, mm -hmm. you don't deserve to be out here because I pedaled and you right. didn't or and whatever. You, yeah, exactly. You know? And probably the person look at looking at it from the outside is like, so you're saying you don't really have to work as hard, and you're going up like, well, what's <laughs> why what's the problem? Right. Yeah, what's the problem? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's it's funny. I mean, I don't know. As long as, as long as you're not thinking about it while you're riding, I think you're fine. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Just ride. Leave it at the trailhead. Yeah. Yeah. Let's all get along. Yeah. <laughs> all right. Well, that's that's it for us today. Um, as we said, we've got Bible coming up. So if you have any requests for bikes for us to test or anything else about Bible, leave it in the comments. If you have any questions for us for next time, leave it there and we'll get to it. Thanks for joining us. Thanks.